after creating this monstrosity, my sewing machine is making awful noises and really needs to be serviced. Now I do have other sewing machines, but they are in various states of disrepair, so currently I am without a sewing machine. And then I saw this commercial, and I thought, can you actually sew on that? And turns out no, you cannot actually sew on that because it's a child sewing machine and it has safety features. However, it did make me wonder if there is anything similar that you could actually sew on. Which led me to this. Now I know I could just wait until I get my normal sewing machine up and running, but you see I am very impatient and I came across this very cute pattern that was only $5. So I bought that pattern even though I knew I would have to sew it on a $20 mini sewing machine. I am going to be totally honest here, when I purchased this machine I was not even sure if it would actually sew anything because I have used more expensive expensive modern sewing machines that were pretty much incapable of doing anything. Yes, I am a little bit bitter about that. But anyway, yes, I purchased the pattern and then I had to go to the library to print it out because I am a loser who owns like five sewing machines but not a single printer. After I printed the pattern out, I had to piece together all of the pattern pieces. I don't know, it was like the world's worst puzzle. After the pattern pieces were all cut out, I had to go and make a mock-up. Um, the first mock-up was not great. I ended up with what can only be described as a Victorian crop top, but all in all, that was actually not bad because the only issue was the length. Once I was happy with the mock-up, I cut out the actual pattern pieces, which was actually quite scary because it meant I would have to sew them together on this tiny sewing machine. <laughs> I guess I should try to test this out before I use it. Oh, that's so short. Okay, this is going to be odd. Oh, it's loud. Oh, it did work. That stitching is not bad for $20. Okay, I folded this a bunch of times. This is really wedged in there. It actually did it. I had a $200 sewing machine that died because I tried to sew through two layers of velvet, so this is really impressive. <laughs> because the pedal foot was not long enough to reach the floor, it meant I would have to sew this entire dress while sitting on the floor and I decided I might as well make myself comfortable if I had to be on the floor. Now there is a way to operate this machine by hand, which meant I wouldn't have to use the pedal foot, but I really did not like that method. Didn't really like the way the stitches were coming out. It's just a personal preference. I would rather go straight, even if that means I have to sew on the floor. Sewing the bodice together actually went really well. I didn't run into a single problem, which shocked me. So I moved on to the skirt. Now, one thing I do want to say about the skirt, I did not use the original skirt pattern because I was scared I didn't have enough fabric to do the train. So I used the truly Victorian ripple skirt pattern, which is almost the same thing. Unfortunately, this is when I started to run into problems with the sewing machine. I have reached this machine's limit. It does not want to sew anymore. It's having trouble with the pleats and the waistband. And it's kind of sewing not, not too well. Uh, but now it's reached the point where it does not want to go anymore. I am not really surprised that it is struggling because this is a huge amount of fabric. If you think about it, each panel of the skirt is two layers and this is a pleat, so we're getting multiple layers. Plus there's the waistband, which is folded over on both sides, so those are extra layers. I, I'm not really surprised. I think a lot of machines would struggle with this. I'm a bit impressed that I at least tried here and didn't just die. <laughs> 
It still works. It's not broken. It just doesn't want to go. Okay, I decided to try and be a little bit smarter about this and I pressed the waistband before putting it back in the machine and it pretty much stopped at the same exact spot as before. So I think that's just too much fabric for the machine. And when it goes over that pleat, I think that's about eight layers of fabric. So honestly, that's still pretty good. Okay, if I skip that one spot, it's fine, but oh, the stitching is so ugly. The machine keeps moving as I'm trying to sew because the skirt's so heavy and the machine's so light. Oh, this is so ugly. I'm so embarrassed. It just wants to slide. It takes nothing to move this machine. <laughs> oh no, I think you can even kind of see it from a distance. I'm so embarrassed. It looks so bad. Oh, but you won't see it under the bodice, so I guess it's okay. No, no one can tell. It's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna keep telling myself it's fine. Because the skirt was very heavy, I had to install a hem stiffener. If I did not do this, the skirt would look extremely droopy and sad. Honestly, I hate the look of the outside stitching, but the only way to avoid this would be to stitch the hem stiffener directly to the lining, which would require hand stitching, and that would take a gazillion years, and I'm not going to do that, so I guess I just have to live with it. Despite my problems, I was able to get the skirt completed, which meant I needed to start on the details for the bodice. Now, the bodice has chiffon, and chiffon is generally considered a very, very awful fabric to work on. It just likes to move around a lot. This machine actually made it quite easy. I was able to do all of the ruching on the machine. If you're wondering how I did that, I just sewed straight lines and then pulled it to create the ruching effect. After the ruching was done, I stitched them in place and then stitched ribbon over the ruching to hide the seams. After this step, I needed to do the sleeves and let me tell you, these sleeves caused a lot of problems, but they were entirely my own fault. You see, the normal sleeves look perfectly fine. They are very poofy, very large, very 3D. Somehow I did not think they would end up so large and I just could not stand how tall they were coming off the shoulder. I don't know, I just felt like there was so much detail around the neckline and everything. The giant 3D sleeves, just not really my thing. I kind of altered the sleeve pattern and added a different poof that sat a little bit lower on the shoulder. Now you're probably looking at it and thinking this poof is actually bigger than the original. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, you would be correct, but somehow because this poof sits lower on the shoulder and is a bit more deflated, I don't have a problem with it. After the sleeve situation was solved, I ran into another problem. I did not know which trim to use. Well, I guess in the long run, that's, that's a pretty okay problem to have. Um, so I just asked for help and people said they liked the beaded more, so I used the beaded. Then I added the final details like some lace on the sleeves and the belt and the collar and oh my gosh, I was done. How was that so easy? The pattern did not have any instructions. I used a $20 sewing machine. How was that so simple? I honestly expected this sewing machine to give me so many problems, but actually it was quite simple. I genuinely prefer this machine to some of the more expensive modern machines I've used. After I finished this dress, I found myself reaching for this tiny machine to do mock-ups. It is so convenient for mock-ups. But I think the reason why this tiny machine is so good because it actually is not a lot different than the antique singers I normally use. Both of these machines do one stitch, but they are very, very good at that one stitch. So yeah, for $20, I am extremely impressed by this machine. I mean, look what I was able to make with it. If I could make that, you could probably make something much better with this machine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more, then please like and subscribe.